So there are three parameters for a small signal as in the case of bipolar we will be interested in one is of course GM the other is the output resistance and the third I made mistake I should not say capacitor the model where we are really looking for there is the bandwidth okay and bandwidth is related to capacitance. So we will be interested to know in the small signal model of a MOSFET how much is this capacitance and how much are the resistances around so that we can put a good equivalent circuit and from that we will be able to get the gain GM therefore GM and R0 that is the gain part we can get and also from GM and capacitance we will be able to get the bandwidths. So once we get the equivalent circuit correctly we will be able to get all the physical parameters known then circuit parameters can always be evaluated and if circuit parameters are evaluated the actual system performance gain and bandwidth they also can be always found out. So that is the general technique which we will follow so there is nothing much to say on that. Uh, so the first major uh, small signal parameter which makes MOSFET interesting uh, of course all device uh, has a major interest in the word transconductance which is essentially in the case of MOSFET is change in drain current with change in gate bias okay. Now in this case unless said otherwise source is always grounded okay source is always grounded. So VGS is essentially VG but if not we will say what is VS and then you must find VGS accordingly is that point clear if S is 0 grounded then VS is 0 but in case there is a VS then you will have to find VG minus VS as VGS is that clear. So right now I am assuming source is grounded so difference is VGS. So change in drain current to the change in gate source voltage will give you the transconductance this is the output and this is the input of a MOS transistor and therefore this is transfer transconductance. Uh, normally as I say we will never operate the transistor in which mode I said of course cutoff will never because then the device is off anyway but in even in linear because there the gains are very low so we will not operate but just for the heck of it I can calculate GM linear as well as GM saturation all that I have to do is write the current equation and differentiate with delta by delta VGS of that and evaluate whatever is the GM for linear. So if I do this evaluation and I neglect VDS square because we say VGS minus VT is much larger than VDS that is why it is in linear zone using this condition I can evaluate GM linear is mu C ox W by L into VDS okay but that as I say it is like a resistance do you get a point it is like a resistance linear means IDS VDS characteristics proportional it is a resistance so this is essentially evaluation of a resistance however we are not very and is also short formed as beta okay my symbols and book symbols are different please note down somewhere. Uh, I have been habituated 30, 20 or 30 years uh, K what is constant we use in all books KN or KP I write beta N and beta P is that correct K N dash is B N dash K P dash is B P dash beta N we define as beta N dash into W size W by L that is to just smaller the uh, expressions because if writing every time mu C ox mu C ox W by L we just write betas. Beta has a what units you can think can you suggest from here what will be the unit of uh, beta if you cannot get you find from here this has a unit of volt square current has a unit of amps so amps per volt square is the unit of beta or K whatever is the book uh, why I am saying K because I just today after many day, days I saw the book which I constantly say read uh, Sedar Smith book and they have used K as the constant okay. Why they have used is maybe uh, I just want to know how to operate SPI, SPI stand for what? S of course is simulation okay, P must be program okay, simulating program for special emphasis on integrated circuits this is a Berkeley program which solves circuit simple network nothing great nothing 
uh, simple or nothing right just solve nodal equations i g v and nothing more all that will happen it will have a matrix because i will be i1 i2 i3 v will be v1 v2 v3 and therefore g will be and g will also have the similar matrix value so you will have a uh, some kind of a matrix solver so all that spice does it but spice require models for the transistors so it requires constant w by l c ox t ox vt everything it has to be specified there is a default parameter for a given technology let us say 5 micron process they will give these values which called default. So initially when we are not giving our data we can assume whatever spice parameters are there are there there and just solve the circuit for given input output circuit parameters is that correct. So spice has an advantage it can solve digital it can solve analog, uh, AC it can solve mixed signal it can do all kinds of analysis very easily. Okay, and it is relatively fast it is come from Berkeley and it is a industry standard of course spice has many version model versions like the one which we are using for say 90 nanometer now has a it is called BSIM models okay that is the Berkeley simulating models which is uh, uh, level 3 and the model we are using is 58 or 61 something recently I do not know maybe 58 was the last. So these models keep changing as the device physics tasks are changing because of shrinking otherwise basic idea in spice remains same it is all circuit or it is our can network okay. So I think you should know this because some problems we may give you which need not be analytically solved it may be a little complicated circuit but then you can substitute there and by stroke of luck everything will come correct. Now that is good thing about simulations it always gives you results irrespective whether you are good student or a bad student okay. Now I do not mean bad in any sense but I mean those who are not wanting to do even if they substitute some number some result will come. The only problem with spice is and which any simulation program is how do you know the result you got is correct because you gave something and got something. Anyone can do it even a kid of 3 years can clean something and may something uh, it does not mean he is correct okay. Spice is correct because it will receive something and it will get you get you something. Whether device in saturation, not it does not know anything, it, it only receives values, okay. it is a mathematical tool. There is where your intervention is required that you should know what you are feeding, and that is why that much part you should know better. Is that clear? Otherwise, spice does almost everything in the world, okay. All industries have all designs of analog digital mixed signal circuits, RF circuits are using spice. Spice are different model, RF model, this model, very various models. Uh, by the way the versions which we use called Spectre or very different companies each is a very costly business typically one computer license spice version may cost you a million dollars of course this is called industry standard but the academic standards are much lower and we may get it in 5000 rupees also okay. So that is why accuracy is what we get and what they get okay. So do not worry if you do not know. Uh, I think if you sit on a PC lab someday and some basic introduction someone give you, you will be much more I think I use much less spice now compared to what I used 20, 15 years ago or 20 years ago than what you can use and it does not require great, it can be even downloaded on your own PC laptop if you have and can it does not require huge memory the spice version which I am talking which is the old version for a 5 micron process that is very cheap 3G version and you can always try circuits on that. The results cannot be as accurate as could have been on the cadence tools but it is good enough for our course is that okay. So please learn spice because it has nothing to do with my course spice is some kind of a general tool required for digital analog any circuit you do want even communication circuit at the end even in communication you will get some circuit okay. Solving a circuit is easiest on spice okay. There is another program which does very great job is MATLAB. I do not know whether you already started working somewhere because signal processing people cannot survive probably without the MATLAB or vice versa okay. Okay MATLAB would not have been of course MATLAB also has a circuit simulator okay but it is not as good as spice so better use of this okay. This is all general because as second year rights you should now start thinking ahead and I am trying to push you to little ahead of what you should be okay. now you are. Okay, 
the interest for us is in the when the in analog circuit we said MOS transistors are always maintained in saturation. What does the condition in DC way we say when device is in saturation? What is the condition of VGS VDS? That VGS minus VT should be smaller than VDS at any point, okay. Every time VDS should exceed VGS minus VT, okay. If that is so, one can say the current equation then can be written as beta by 2 VGS minus VT square 1 plus lambda VDS. This is current when the device is in saturation. If I take delta of delta VGS of this, now under this case slightly interesting case we should look for. Our assumption is beta uh, VT is constant, okay. VT does not change with uh, VGS, does not change with VDS. This is slightly secondary we shall assume is okay, does not matter, okay. In real life v, VT is not a constant quantity. So, when I differentiate that VGS also, VT also has to be differentiated then it becomes more complicated expressions and hand solving becomes sometimes difficult and SPICE does this automatically you do not have to think, okay. The best thing about SPICE is it, it does not allow you to think and that is good for us, okay. So, if I initially for most circuit unless stated otherwise we will assume lambda to be 0 only what cases we will assume lambda to be 0 when I write currents. But when I write R0, I will not make lambda 0. What does that mean will be? R0 is how much? Infinite. Is that correct? Lambda 0 slope is 0, which means resistance is infinite. But that is never infinite and therefore calculation of R0 will definitely you get a value of lambda. Otherwise, in normal current equation, if you neglect lambda, nothing much worse will happen in actual analysis, okay. So, initially to get, get to a correct simple values, I neglect lambda. So, 1 plus lambda VDS is 1 and if I differentiate this with VGS, then it becomes GM, beta, so not beta dash sorry. Maybe or if you, if it is a beta dash, I will just for, for the sake of correctness, I will multiply it by W by L, but that dash unnecessarily came there, but does not matter. Uh, if I substitute the current equation assuming lambda 0 back to this expression, you can write beta by 2, okay, beta Vgs minus Vt. I can write beta by 2 Vgs minus Vt square into 2 upon Vgs minus Vt. Then the first part is IDS, is that okay? This part is IDS, okay. Okay, also in book, this S part is normally mess, not used, I, they only use ID. Please, I write IDS because from the device side, current cannot be drain current unless it reaches source, okay. So, in our case, we always believe that it should be written IDS. If you write ID, it is okay, they are, they are saying drain current, which drain current has to go to source, source anyway, okay. Source is grounded. But said and done, my symbols are more from the device point of view because we have been working on devices for 30 years. So, on design, so on circuits. So, our symbolization is more from the device side. So, I can write 2 IDS upon VGS minus VT, but what is VGS minus VT we said? It is called over voltage VOV. So, it is 2 IDS by VOV. So, GM is 2 IDS by VOV. If I instead of doing this, I replace VGS minus VT from this in terms of gm and beta i repeat i replace this vgs minus vt from this expression that is 2 gm upon beta under root of that as vgs minus vt and substitute by i can rewrite gm as 2 beta n g ids is that clear what i wrote this is ids is that correct so Two IDS upon beta n under root of that is VGS minus VT. Substitute here that value, and you'll get GM is equal to two. This expression many times we use. Two beta n IDS. So if I am given a bias current, I am given the sizes, given the technology that is beta n dash, mu c ox. So I can immediately evaluate what is the GM of the uh, transistor I am going to use. Is that clear? This is. Assumption is that someone is giving me VOV, someone is giving me VOV, but if I am given IDS only, still I can evaluate. Is that clear? 
So that is the method of evaluation either cases can be used okay either cases they are same by the way expressions are same. The second parameter of interest to us is R0 which is the output resistance and I said you other day it is 1 upon lambda IDS. Uh, it is also written as VA upon IDS where VA is early voltage. Also can be we also explain other day that lambda has some uh, technology parameter called lambda dash and that is why what I said is that day that lambda is lambda dash which is technology parameter which is fixed to us for given technology and L is the channel length. Why I wrote this? Why I wrote this expression in specific? Can you think R0 will lambda dash for a given technology is fixed? Okay. IDS is my bias parameter. I am going to decide 1 milliamp, half a milliamp, whatever way I want, 2 milliamp or 1.5 milliamp. So, if I want to increase R0, what should I increase? Channel length. For the circuit person, this is foolish because I have I am getting a transistor already given on board, I cannot change length. But why I showed you this because tomorrow if you become a analog designer that is chip designers that time what parameter you will start controlling for R0? The lengths, I will start increasing lengths. But if I increase length what I will lose there from here? GM is that point clear to you the other day that is why I brought this expression. If I increase channel length I will improve R0 which is obvious okay, is that clear? However, if I increase channel length W by L will go down and therefore GM will go down, is that correct? So now you have to understand in design, why it is called design? Because if I control R0, I lose track on GM, if I start controlling GM, I start tracking losing track on R0 and that is what people are say I want gain of this much. Now the designer has to be Are I want so much GM and so much R0 how will I get? That is where the whole design issues are issued. In this course R0 is fixed, GM is known but I am just trying to give you that wha what is the design word coming from okay. Analysis is shown from there we start thinking what spec I have to meet when I am designing okay. Is that okay? Yes. Who said? Oh you mean current gain, yes. Uh, that is because uh, MOS transistor is not a current driven device. So obviously we are IGs are treated 0 in that. So you can say infinite okay, IDS by IG. No, in the sense but transconductance is with reference to voltage, input voltage not from current. We are across even an insulator which is a capacitor, voltage can be created. So I am saying change in input signal which is voltage, I will still see the output current varying and therefore that is what I am interested in. What is the change in output current with reference to change in input voltage, is that correct? Current gain is yes, it does not exist in the case of MOS transistors yeah, because IG as it says there is no DC gate current at least unless we say leakages uh, exist in the case of, by the way that IG is not 0 now that is our worry. But today in course yes IG is 0. That means insulator is perfect insulator, no DC current can flow from gate to the any of the substrate source or thing. That is why the insulator was kept okay. However, in real life as I say that issue is now worrying us okay, but not for this course okay. Very good, thinking is very good. So if I compare the two before we go to circuits. I wrote an expression GM is equal to 2 IDS by VOV, is that clear? GM is equal to 2 IDS by VOV. If I use this expression, I get GM by IDS is 2 by VOV, is that okay? Simple. Typically, VGS minus VT should not be very large. Why it should not be very large? Because device has to remain in saturation and condition there is VDA should be larger than VGS minus VT. So VGS minus VT if it is too large then device may not remain in saturation. But if it is too small the current made available to you because current is proportional to VGS minus VT square. So if I reduce too much VGS minus VT I do not get current at all okay. 
So, I must balance, I must have V O V which is relatively higher but much smaller than possible V D S values which I am going to use. Is that okay? V D S has to be larger than V G S minus V T or V O V as we call it. If we reduce V O V too much then the current made available is very small, okay. However, since I want to push large current for deliver, I cannot reduce V O V too small. But I do not want VOV to be very large because then my condition of saturation may not be valid and therefore I keep somewhere around 200, 300 millivolts some kind of values which most uh, technologies use. It can be at best 500, 600 millivolts at best. Okay. Is that point clear to you everyone that how why we this value typically 200 millivolts can be 500 also just to give some criteria. If I put this 200 millivolt value, I get Gm by IDS roughly equal to 10, okay. Gm by IDS is equal to 10. Now, if I use the similar value, please take it. If I increase VOV, then Gm by IDS will be less than 10. Is that correct? Gm by IDS will be even less than 10. If I look at BJT, what is the value there we calculated for Gm by Ic, Qi by Q by Kt, what is Gm, Qic by Kt, so Gm by Ic is Q by Kt, typical value at 300 degree Kelvin is how much we calculated, 38, okay. So we see this number is 38 and how much is Gm by IDS is going to be less than 10, even less than 10, 5, 4, it can be of that kind. So, do you always feel that Gm by Ic will always be larger at least 3, 4 times larger than 5 term, 8 times larger than Gm by IDS? What does that have influence at the end of the day? Therefore, as far as the this part is concerned providing Gm by Ic ratio, Gm by I ratio, bipolars are always superior to MOS transistors. Is that clear? Bipolars are always superior to MOS transistors. So, is that point clear when I day, day 1 I said bipolar circuits are far superior compared to MOS circuits. But then why are we working on MOS? Because world has forced us. They say digital circuits are going to be only on the MOS because MOS performance on digital is far superior to BJT, much smaller circuit, much low power circuit. So, if I had to do digital and very, very small technologies which has a very small voltages, then I will work only for MOSFETs. But I do not have only analog blocks to be sold, I have to be part of this digital block. So, I say, okay, well, I will work on MOS, okay. So, that day one I said, why analog people are facing problem? Because they have been given bad tools and say produce the best designs. How can, how can I do it, Baba? Tum, everything is against stacked against me and say, no, do better. That is exactly what we do for you. Lot of courses we give you, lot of home assignment, lot of this, and expect you to get A grade in every one of them. That is what the life is all about, okay. So, please realize that this is nothing to do with my course, it is true for our life. So, we are just following that, okay. okay. Let us look for limitations as we did for bipolar. What is the bipolar limitation? I say how much signal should be less than Kt by Q, sufficiently smaller than Kt by Q. Let us see what happens in the case of MOSFET. Uh, this is a typical amplifier shown here, but we will not look for amplification here. We are just trying to say uh, there is a power supply, there is a ground, drain source, there is a RD and we say there is a capital VGS is the DC bias, okay over which a AC signal of small VGS is over reading. What is it called in uh, maths? Superposition. So, a DC signal is superimposed by an AC signal and we expect the output voltage also will have then two parts DC part and AC part and if I want to get rid of DC what should I do? Put a capacitor then only AC will pass that is what amplifiers will do later when we only look for small signal AC output. So, if this is V0 this and I know IDS, what is this IDS means? This is the total current DC plus AC which is equal to beta n by 2 and assuming right now which device is 
n channel devices will be used till said otherwise beta n by 2 vgs minus vt plus vgs you are superimposing square 1 plus lambda vgs as usual lambda is small the second order term is neglected and therefore so what is the small current ac current then will be ids will be how much the net current minus the dc current id capital ds minus capital ids then that is the ac current is that okay what is ac current total current minus the dc current so i just subtract so i now use expression for this expression for this this is the expression for total current this is the expression for dc current is that okay this is the total current this is the dc current so i just subtracted nothing very serious I did and I expanded the terms to see which terms cancels. So, if I do this if you write down okay, is that point clear I just want to know how much is the AC current I am giving okay, or small signal current I am giving 2 beta n by 2 VGS minus VT into small VGS into 1 plus VGS upon 2 capital VGS minus VT this is just subtraction nothing very great about okay. which terms will cancel VGS capital VGS minus VT square term will cancel because that DC and this DC will move it. this is the term remainder which can be rewritten in this form is that okay last expression is okay just collecting the terms okay, okay. is that expression wrote down okay so uh, just after in case you are not written just few again I have written if those who are not written can write right. So, small ids is gm times vgs into 1 achha, then I replaced my gm formula in the first part of the expression and therefore I get ids is gm vgs 1 plus vgs upon 2 vgs minus v. Now, if I want to say this term I do not want which one 1 plus plus term I do not then what is the condition I am saying I want 2 VGS minus VT should be much larger than VGS numerator should be smaller than denominator by order okay and if this condition I force then I get IDS is equal to GM times VGS that is what small signal equivalent model I want. If I have a small signal input voltage VGS the output AC current should be GM times that VGS as straight as that is that clear that is what the network theory is saying no? I is equal to G times V. So, I want that expression to appear this can appear only when when it can appear when 2 VGS minus VT is larger than AC signal which is VGS. If you put some typical value say VGS will be order of say 2 volt VGS minus VT will be order of say 2 volt then VGS should be at least much smaller than 2 volt and uh, the, this is slightly better than bipolar degraded there it is only 26 millivolt. So, MOS has little advantage that the AC signal can be slightly larger than bipolar. Is that point clear to you why I brought this expression to you that compared to bipolar MOS transistors small signals can be little larger ok. But what is the problem there GM is smaller as we see earlier. So, all that we say if VGS can be larger but GM is smaller. So, GM VGS is not increasing even as compared to bipolars. Is that clear to you? So, all seven advantages, oh, nothing. Small VGS typically less than 20 millivolts. See, order, order means this will be VOV, so 200 millivolts order, so 10 times karo. So, roughly 10 means one order. So, one order less or not expansion call 0 karne ke liye. So, typically 20 millivolt, but in there we, we do not even use 20 millivolt, 5 millivolt, 3 millivolt at best 10 millivolts in bipolar. 
here we can exceed little but I tell you what is the problem this GM is much lower so GM VGS will not be larger than bipolar either way okay. So that is where the issues are that why bipolar and why mass okay. Yes I agree with you but what did I do is I have substituted linear part voltage part there I have never said the current is linear but I really want GM to be linear okay. So I said okay this is a non-linear term definitely it is a non-linear term I am subtracting also another non-linear term out of it. So this term is non-linear to make a linear case I said this, can, this term should be smaller. What you are saying is true this expression is non-linear. So to make it linear I say the condition I can have is 2 VGS minus VT should be order higher than the small VGS and then I say it is linearized because all the time I say this circuits are called linear circuits. So I want to linearize it faster okay. So I say what condition I can linearize. So I say okay if I use this I am linearized is that okay. Okay so equivalent circuit of a MOS transistor at the end of the day using so called what we did you have a gate you have a drain and you have a common source okay. There is no current or resistance right now between gate and source because gate to source resistance is how much it is an insulator sitting there so how much say hundreds of mega ohms so practically open circuit okay. But what can happen there what can occur instead of resistance the capacitance we are not looked into right now capacitance we only looked into the simple equivalent part coming from I and GM. The output current just now I wrote GM VGS so it should be GM VGS okay and if I include my R0 term then the equivalent circuit of a mass transistor is VGS here GM VGS shunted by R0 and how much will be R0 much higher tens of mega ohm or 1 to tens of mega ohm. So this will be relatively good current source is that clear it, it should be good current source. But just take a case which is interesting case yeah or maybe our circuit is here uh, if I that circuit figure if you use this circuit where this RD will appear where this RD will appear in this small signal. RD is between uh, this has to be understood all of you know well but re, I will reinstate, uh, restate what is the actual for AC this point is ground this point is ground for AC. So RD is between drain and ground so if I is that clear drain and ground so where this will appear here externally RD is that okay. So Rd will be shunting R0, R0 is of the order of how much tens of mega ohms at least one but even 10 depends on what lambda which will be given to us say whatever lambda this is. If that is so what is the actual resistance I am going to get here Rd only because Rd will be in few kilo ohms tens of kilo ohms 20 of kilo ohms but this will be in tens of mega ohms. So essentially what will be V0 if I calculate V0 here of course I have another slide but just for the heck of it how much will be V0 minus GM VGS R0 parallel RD and if RD is much smaller compared to R0 it is GM RD. So is that correct at the end of the day in a circuit the load decides the output voltage is that clear. But in an integrated circuit there are no RDs we put okay I will show you that some in the end of the course what ICs do okay. We will replace RD by a resist transistor itself and if that happens this will be much larger and if that happens this will be typically order of R0 itself. So for integrated circuit gains are GM times R0 but for a normal our open circuits with transistor given to us the gains will be decided by RD which is provided externally by us is that correct GM times RD is what gain will be actually appear is that clear this part has to be understood because R0 is very high 
So, GM R0 is okay that part let me do again before we go here. The expression if I use the same ones V in is equal to VGS. So, V0 is GM VGS R0. So, GM R0 V in. So, the V0 by V in is AV is minus GM R0. Is that correct? This is called intrinsic gain of an amp transistor. This is called intrinsic gain of a transistor. Is that correct? This is not extrinsic. Why it is not called extrinsic? Because RD is not connected. Is that correct? This is intrinsic. Is that okay? Why is called intrinsic? Because there is no external component right now sitting on it. It is internal to what is this gain? Okay. So this is also to some extent figure of merit for us. What is the maximum gain this transistor can provide? Okay. Typically, say let's say this is 10 mega ohms. GM will be order of some milliamp per volt square per volt. So you can say this will be order of thousand at best of times. Is that correct? It will be highest value will be. 1000. So, when I shunt it with RD whether it will be more than 1000 or less always be less than 1000 is that correct. So, the typical gains you can get is 10 to 100 to 400 or no more than not even 1000 is that clear. 1000 is what we say is the upper limit ok. So, a analog amplifier cannot actually intrinsically go beyond say few hundreds uh, of an amplification. But actual the amplification will be much smaller as RDs will decide. I will show why RD also decides something. Okay. If GM is 2 IDS by VOE R0 is this, I can say GM R0 is 2 upon lambda VGS minus VT or 2 IDS something like this. Uh, so, given a over voltage for a circuit, I can also find the intrinsic gain. Is that correct? given the lambda and VOV for the circuit or transistor sorry then I will be able to find what is the intrinsic gain of this transistor. So, when I why I am giving you this because when I am making a circuit on a board how to choose a transistor from the box they give you. So, ok I say I want so much gain. So, let us see what is the intrinsic gain I can get these value will be specified in the manual data sheets. So, you find ok. So, this is 500 is fine and that much is good enough. This has to be done when I actually go on the board before and I should know how much it is. Is that ok? So, certain things as a uh, when we do experiment we ought to know a priori. These are the way a priori values are evaluated. Now, coming to the last part of the transistor which is related to bandwidth is the capacity. This is a typical n channel MOS transistor shown here. This is your source, this is your drain, this is your bulb, this is your gate separated by oxide of thickness T ox and the oxide capacitance is always expressed as oxide capacitance per unit. Why did we do this? Because this device people have habit of using charge densities. Is that clear? Q, capital Q they will say, so charge density. So, Q is equal to Cv. So, if I use charge density and if I do not use C as per unit area then that equation is not balanced. So, I, I say either be per, per centimeter, either be per centimeter square. Q is Cv sub jaga. That is why they did it. Aisa main yaha bata Waha kuch aur bata okay. So, C ox is epsilon ox by T ox. For a different technologies T ox may vary. What is the smallest T ox right now in the new Intel 22 nanometer Intel processor has come? How much is T ox they are using? I already said technology is known by the number I keep telling 22 nanometers ok, 22 nanometers. So, something less than that will be uh, much less than that will be your. These days we actually we want less than some Armstrong say 1 or 2 Armstrongs of oxide ok. Now, we cannot create 2 Armstrongs of oxide why can you tell me why? Because the bond to bond uh, atom to atom bond distance itself will be not less than 1.6 Armstrongs ok. So, for even 1 monolayer of atoms you cannot have that kind of thickness of oxide ok because you need 2 atoms minimum silicon and oxygen. So, uska separation hi isse kam nahi hai. Unka dia bhi hai. So, aisa kuch karne hai. So, what how can we do? We are still working on 
less than a nanometer kind of uh, oxide thickness. How do we do that? Epsilon, we are increasing proportionately epsilon so that T also can be increased capacitance held. Okay. That is why it is called high K dielectrics. The new technologies use no silicon dioxide, but dielectrics like hafnium oxide, hafnium oxynitrides, gallium oxide, lanthanum oxide, European oxide. Uh, for example, I have been working in last summer on very stack of lanthanum and gallium oxides in Japan when I was two months there. So, we are looking for very high K typically I am looking for a K of 60 or 70 and we may use it in memory dynamic trans ok. So, the kind of uh, research going on in the material side for the circuits is high K now ok. Uh, so, the capacitance is associated you can see from here if there is no inversion channel what is the capacitance between gate and bulk CGB. Is that correct? If there is no channel, what is the capacitance? CGB, which is nothing but how much? Cox, no inversion channel. Let us say there is an inversion channel throughout, okay. Then bulk is not connected now. So, what is the capacitance now associated? between channel, channel has heavy number of electrons, they are connected to high n and n. So, again a capacitance is C ox, is that correct? Instead of bulk, now the black back plate is provided by the channel. Earlier the back plate was here, there was a resistance here, but much smaller and there was a capacitor. Now that R is also removed, only a capacitor. Now the problem with MOS transistor if you have uh, Mr. Saha has told you this is a distributed capacitor, this is not uniform everywhere. So, what do we do? Actually, there are n such capacitances sitting here. So, what we say for simplicity, half C ox is provided at the source end and half capacitance is provided at the drain end. So, I say CGS and CGD will be half C ox and half C ox. Is that correct? Is that point clear? CGS half C ox. CGD half C ox and if CGD does not exist, I will give full C ox to CGS. That is the way modeling is done, ok. So, here is something CGS is half C ox into gate area. How much is gate area? W into L. CGD is also half C ox into AG, which is again W by L. But let us take it, same is CGS plus CGD, which is C ox times W into L. Is that correct? Simple. In case there is no channel, what is the capacitance? Same C ox into W into L because there is between the bulk, the gate area and the oxide, nothing else. So, CGB is also C ox into W by L. But when the device really goes into saturation, okay, sorry, this is not correct, this half half is only for non saturation. In real life, it is two thirds C ox at the source end. Okay. Why it is so? Because if channel pinches earlier, there is no drain end capacitance. Is that correct? So, I say all of this C ox is now pushed to source side and CGD I say does not exist as it. Though CGD may come because of the depletion layer at the drain side. So, CGD is not 0, but that CGD which was coming from oxide is now pushed to source side. Is that point clear? I repeat. Since in a MOS transistor, when the channel pinches here, okay, the drain is now sorry, drain is now not connected to the oxide because there is a semiconductor depletion layer here. So the capacitance here is due to depletion layer and not due to the oxide. Is that correct? Not due to the oxide. So CGD is now essentially because of the semiconductor capacitance on the lateral side and not so much from the upper side. Whereas, if you look at the source side, oxide is still sitting here. So, all of C ox is pushed to the source side, ok. So, in saturation, you may use C in as C ox in W by L in any mode of transfer, any mode, ok. That may not be accurate, but that is good enough for our calculation as far as numbers are concerned. In physics, yes, we have to find what exact value is that ok. 
then there are two more capacitances we see what is this n plus p what is n plus p in physics diode this n plus p is also a diode reverse bias why it is reverse bias i say if the bulk is grounded what is the voltage i will apply on drain plus value vds so this is heavily reverse bias large depletion layer will come here in fact okay and therefore there will be a smaller capacitance on this side okay however even at zero bias the diode is reverse bias there will be a smaller depletion layer but there will be there and there will be cgs also and if source gate now can you think i can actually putting source to ground and still this reverse bias can be increased by what if i put minus value or other for p minus voltage at the bulk source to bulk voltage will increase minus so is source to grade to uh, drain to bulk also will increase further is that correct so if there is a vsb available per se then the capacitance will change is that okay is that okay the depletion layer will enhance with applied bulk bias okay and if that happens the capacitance will increase or decrease decrease or increase if i increase vsb negative more what will decrease decrease because x will increase epsilon by t uh, d so d increases means capacitance falls if the capacitance is smaller it is more worrying or it is larger is more worrying smaller is worrying me more why 1 upon j omega c c will come into picture then okay at frequencies of my lower frequency so i am worried how much this is okay therefore i calculate diode capacitances assuming step junctions what is this phi sb and phi db i wrote there which are these terms built in voltage for source drain junctions and uh, source to bulk and drain to bulk junctions generally they will be same but not every time there is a device which is called lightly drain uh, doped drain what is the structure called led mos okay drain is lightly doped thoda ek aisa ek aur n lagate hain in that case the dopings are different and phi is also different so if general formula we write phi sb and phi uh, sorry uh, yeah phi sb and phi db but normally phi sb for equal to phi db in our case okay, okay. so i can calculate all capacitors i in our course we may not calculate but we just want to show you that we can evaluate for a given technology given bias the capacitances yes it depends on whether the device a uh, capacitance is in series or capacitance is in parallel is that clear if it is in series something else will happen because it will path shorting or opening in passion it is if it is open good because it opens okay but if it shorts then i am worried is that clear in series if it acts shorts good that means that component is not relevant in shunting parallel if it shunts everything goes down so it capacitance where decides the choice is that clear so i don't a priori want to tell you which will be where depends on wherever it occurs i'll see whether the impedance offered for me puts me into difficulty or it doesn't put me in difficulty either way okay okay so typical equivalent circuit of a mos transistor for capacitance shows a cgd here a cgs here then between bulk and the source and bulk and the drain okay these are the minimum four capacitance can occur in the circuits is that okay yes. however i repeat these values will be specified to you maybe in the first tutorial i may solve one or two values to show what they get but otherwise circuit people are not asked to evaluate why i showed you this because you should know connection you have done a course on devices from there i am picking those values finally for this therefore we have the ft what is ft value we said other day unity gain frequency which is gm upon 2 cn capacitance at the input or 2 pi cn if ft and the input capacitance is can you tell me why i am adding all of it take it sorry are you getting both together now this and this 
at this end C in please remember unity gain means this is directly connected to the ground V0 is 0 is that point clear how do I call Ft voltage output voltage is shorted okay. So for this case this is ground mean this is also in parallel to CGS is that correct this capacitance and this capacitance both are parallel and why this CGB I have added for the sake in case there is no inversion channel device in off state whatever is the capacitance is CGB whatever happens whichever is dominant I will put. So I said okay in general I should write CGS plus CGD plus CGB in general CGD plus CGB will be 0 for saturated device unless stated otherwise then it equal to CGS which is C ox into W by L is that clear. So in devices we do evaluate everything and verify in circuits we will give you this value and just get this is that okay. If I specify you CGD you do use that if I not specify do not use it okay. If I say this is 0 0.2 femtofarad yeah, you actually connect is that clear is that point clear. So any capacitance if specified do not ask me physics you say okay these are the values okay. As far as circuit is concerned we are only looking which, which connect to where. But how to get them is physics which you have learned I thought you should know connections because I promised you that first 2-3 hours uh, lectures I will explain you from devices how do we come to circuit okay. Why I show we do not show so much in digital because there 0 1 mein koi farak nahi bade, kuch bhi kuch karo. I told you just now CGS is to gate to source capacitance which is oxide capacitance half C ox. CGD is half C ox if the channel exists throughout but in analog circuit drain will not be getting connected okay drain is saturated there so no CGD will occur so all the oxide capacitance is given to CGS okay. CGB is the value if there is no channel gate to bulk capacitance exist that is the oxide capacitance if no channel VGS is very small less than VT no channel exists between gate to bulk there is whole capacitance of the oxide so W into L into C ox. Now all three may not be exist simultaneously is that point clear but in general all three can be as if added whichever dominates in zone of operation use that in our case I already said CGB and CGD can be neglected as far as CN is concerned. And you write C is just CGS, sorry, this is CGS, huh? sorry, and if I made mistake, CGS, which is C ox into W. Is that okay? This is to show you in general what specific is what. In saturation, the other two can be neglected, okay, and CGS is given all of it, okay, all of it. Is that okay? Now you should have asked that, sir, L correct hai kya ki source to channel link to it nahi hai, but that is assumption. That is why I said two third tha na ho, or two third ko hata ke mene pura kar diya. Or two third bhi accurate nahi hai because it is a trapezoidal rule liya hai. Or trapezoid hai nahi exponential hai, okay. Kahi ke error function hai. So you know maths bahut jada complicate na karein. Isliye hamne ka, achar, if I increase little bit more, what is I am doing actually? I am projecting myself. Some other parasitic would have anyway added there per se. So if I use little higher value, my bandwidth may go down. Is that clear? So I am always on the safer side because I am using tenth of that you know, or hundredth of that in my use. So if I initially say 100 megahertz and use 1 megahertz, it is okay. It would have been really 120 megahertz. So what? I am actually reducing the operating frequency even lower so that I am guaranteedly remained in this operating values. Is that correct? So by little bit enhancing that C, I am not actually losing in circuit energy. Is that I am just saving my what is it called engineering approximation. Building margin If there is a cutoff situation, gate voltage is less than Vt, the mass transistor still has a capacitance between gate and the bulb. That is CGB. Is that correct? That is yours. Oh, so what you are saying, adding I, I do not mean really that all of them should be added simultaneously for a given mode of operation of a transistor, one of them or two of them will be working. 
let us say it is in linear mode CGB will be 0 each will be half hour yeah because yeah, yeah your point since the channel exists here it is cleaning the bulb channel has a large number of electrons one side is source connected the plate is already made available to ECOX. There is a resistance here which you may say object to the semiconductor resistance is in series there but that we are anyway saying is much smaller okay because the area is very large of the vapor. So epsilon uh, rho L by A why that resistance is smaller rho may not be very small okay but A is very large area so the resistance offered by the substrate is smaller. In a very very high frequency maybe we will have to worry that also but as of now if it is in saturation I said the channel moved away so I say okay all capacitance due to oxide I give it to source because drain side I do not. So when I say I am summing 3 I do not mean actual calculate and for a given mode of operation I will use whichever the value I should get if off I will use CG. If linear I will use CGS plus CGD but both I will ascribe half half so it is again CO and if it is saturation I will only use CGS and I still use CX is that clear. So I am only saying in general they are they are together whichever dominates will take care okay is that okay okay. So finally before we leave this this is the equivalent circuit of a MOS transistor. एक टर्म अभी इसमें से निकालनी है वो मैं अभी थोड़े देर में बताता हूँ एक टर्म इसमें एक्स्ट्रा है उसको भी डिराइव कर देते हैं बाद में आपको आगे दिखा दूँ दिस इज कॉल्ड हाई फ्रीक्वेंसी मॉस मॉडल ओके दिस इज हाई व्हाइट इज कॉल्ड हाई फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑल कैपेसिटेंसेस हैव बीन एडेड ओके इन स्मॉल फ्रीक्वेंसी व्हाट विल यू डू we will remove all capacitances as if 1 upon j omega c is either open circuit or a short circuit if it is series parallel whichever way it happens we remove all of them okay. There is a gate here there is a drain here something I have not drawn here also maybe you can think of it there also there will be another resistance here which is RGG dash there will be another resistance here which is RDD. There will be another resistance here source to source dash RSS dash. I will just explain you maybe we may use this we may not use this as GMB terms. This is not small huh? that is why I have given you that term. So what is CDV and CSB? These are the diode capacitances is that correct? CSB and CDB are diode capacitor drain to bulk source to bulk. CGS अभी आपको बोला CGD अभी आपको बोला R0 is known this is gate there may be a gate resistance itself RGG dash there will be a drain resistance also available there will be a source resistance also what are these because of source and drain n plus regions and contact they will have some resistance like base collector abhi has shown in bipolar there will be a resistance RGG dash which is not very relevant why because no DC current really flows through this okay but for AC there is a drop there okay so one has to worry about that okay. generally it is small because of metal use there okay. GM VGS is the current source proportional to your VGS input is VGS gate to source current source at the output is GM times VGS this is our RJ now the term which I have not yet explained is GMB not VGS I am sorry 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 I am very sorry it should be VBS I am sorry made a mistake that is why I think you might have got worried VSB or VSB okay I am sorry okay what is this GMB VSB this is another current source what is the okay this is plus value so what whether it will add to the net current or it will subtract both are in no same sense they will add do no ekhi direction mein so GM VGS plus GMB VSB total current itna hai wahan par ha wo capital VSB hai. actually biased ke karan abhi aapko uska quickly example dete hain why we are saying so just now few minutes ago I said we assume VT is constant what did I say VT is constant 
but in real life Vt is also decided by how much is the bulk voltage. Just now few minutes ago I said if I apply minus Vsb to the bulk what happens to say source drain and gate so, uh, source bulk and drain bulk? The depletion layer enhances, is that correct? If you know your theory well, Mostan's theory, any depletion charge below the channel, where, where does it contributes to in Vt? Minus Qb by C ox. If you add an uh, additional Qb, the Vt will enhance. The expression given is Vt is equal to Vt0 that is 0 Vsb value plus gamma times gamma is a constant under root 2 phi some value I will explain 2 phi f Fermi level Fermi uh, voltage plus Vsb minus 2 phi f to the power half. So essentially saying with Vsb it is Vt without Vsb it is Vt0. So additional Vt will appear if negative bias, is that point clear? If there is a depletion layer in the channel region now because of the source drain, then the additional charge in the depletion layer enhances the Vt value because there the value was Qb by C ox. Initial depletion was because of what? Because of the gate voltage I am applying. Now there is additional bias I am giving from bottom plate it will also put large uh, depletion charge at the channel side that additional charge will enhance Vt. By same logic if I were to put Vsb positive what would have happened? Vt would have gone down this is fantastic this in fourth year or some year later if you are engineers in this area VLSI anytime or in communication chip designs then you will realize that Vt control is now external, so, so external bar hai, under to fix hai sub transistor ke, but piche se hi mein bias laga ke, I can vary the Vt of my choice, okay. This is very great control, this is VSB control, okay, but that is not my job. If I write this Vt like this, IDS will be like this. If I take delta IDS by delta VSB which I am defining as GMB, why it is called B? Bulk, okay. Transconductance change in current with change in bulk voltage is called GMB, okay. Bulk transconductance. That is can be if I differentiate this, I get gamma upon 2 phi plus VSB times GM. And this whole factor gamma upon 2 phi plus under root of this is given a name eta, is given a name eta, okay. Typical eta value is 0.6. So how much is an equivalent circuit? Let us say GM VGS is some value and GMB is how much? 0.6 GM value hai maha. So actually 1.6 gm milega aapko edi vsb lagaya tha otherwise sirf 1 gm mil raha tha abhi 1.6 gm value aapko hum dete is that clear to you that's the trick in actually controlling the gains substrate bias can actually change the gain so is that gm in our cases sometimes we may say GMB0 you need not use but just because that actual circuit equivalent was shown GMB value may be specified and maybe you draw it there okay. Is that okay? okay? Okay. I have a MOS transistor right now I am not showing you any great DC things here no biasing that is what we will start next time. I am actually biasing this circuit by something what is called constant current source okay. What is the impedance of constant current source? Infinite. That is why it is called constant current source. So, output resistance of a constant current source is infinite. Is that clear? So, I am biasing with the DC bias current I, IDS, capital IDS, so DC current. It is pushed through this. I am putting a V in, I am finding V0 here and an amplifier. I want to find V0 by V in, the gain. If you have done network theory and Professor Narayan being so great, uh, one can say change in this at this two port network if I solve here, 
change in current through this transistor if delta i ds it can be written as gm times v in plus g0 times v0 this is network two port equivalent network g0 gm shunting gm vgs r0 r0 is 1 upon r0 is g0 so i say gm v in ye likha hai na figure dikha hai aapne aapko ha gm v in plus g0 v0 is delta i ds change in current through the transistor if i apply v in now current source biasing since we did we define gm now that is the definition of small signal uh, value gm is delta ids by vn in what condition when v0 is when this term zero then delta ids by vn is gm by same logic g0 is equal to delta ids by v0 when vn is maths nothing great एक टर्म को जीरो करो तो दूसरा मिलता है इस टर्म को जीरो करो ये मिलता है सिंपल मैथ्स हाउ एवर प्लीज लुक एट दिचुएशन आई डी एस इज ए फिक्स करंट डी सी फिक्स करंट ओके सो डेल्टा आई डी एस देर इज नो चेंज बिकॉज एट्स नॉट आई से फिक्स डी सी करंट इफ डेल्टा आई डी एस इज जीरो एंड आई सब्सटीट्यूट हियर देन जी एम वी एन प्लस जी जीरो वी जीरो इज जीरो so v0 by vn is gm by g0 minus or minus gm r0 wo jo pehle aapko nikal ke diya tha na expression wo dekho isse bhi aata hai two port network se bhi aata hai so depends on how do you want to solve a circuit the result would be same from any way is that correct what is v as v0 or vn means the gain av voltage gain so voltage gain of a transistor is when bias with constant current source is my, that's why i call intrinsic gm times r0 next time we'll start the actual mosfet amplifiers first we'll start with biasing then we'll show you some amplifiers and then we'll do bi bipolar why we want to postpone bipolar because as i said 60 70% mos so let's do mos first thank you for the day